I don't know if you guys can hear that, but I've got a bad tie rod. Now this job can seem kind of daunting or, or too much for most DIYers to do because usually it always requires an alignment. Uh, it's not always as simple as just being able to count the threads as they come out and then put them back in. The last set of tie rods I've changed on a W211, it had to have an alignment afterwards. It just didn't uh, drive quite right. But I've got a solution just using stuff I've had laying around the house to be able to change uh, tie rods and make sure that the alignment is dead on to where it was before you change the tie rod. Uh, let me show you that setup. What I've got here is the redneckiest of all redneck solutions. I have a two by four fastened down to the tire. Now it doesn't need to be perfectly level or, or really anything like that. It just needs to be able to sit firmly and not move, which is exactly what I've got going on here. I've got bungee cords holding that down to the tire and then I've got uh, baler twine holding the laser level onto the two by four. And what you can see here is when I turn this thing on, and I look at the wall in front, I've got a clean line right there. And you'll see just from the play in the ball joint, uh, you'll see that laser move side to side when I move the tire side to side. That is all play in the ball joint right there. So what I'm gonna do when I change that inner tie rod, when I put the new one in and I'm ready to uh, set the alignment, is I'm just going to crank that inner tie rod around until enough threads have gone in or out uh, in order to realign that laser right there. And that should make my alignment dead on to where it was before I changed the tie rod. Now, the first thing to take off, and it's the only thing I've taken off thus far, is this right here, this little uh, metal clasp. That's what holds on the rear of the boot here that protects your, uh, your inner tie rod. These are not supposed to be reused. Typically, you're supposed to replace them but I am actually going to reuse this. I found a way to do it. When these are tightened from the factory, this part right here is squeezed, like with a pair of wire cutters. So what you can do is if you re-spread this back open, you can actually reuse this, and that's what I'm going to be doing. More on how to open this up later in the video. Then we can separate this boot from the rack. And then this right here is just a spring clip, hold that down, and then you should be able to slide this entire thing all the way down to the nut on the end, which exposes your tie rod. On this bottom of the tie rod here, you have flats on four sides. You're supposed to grab a hold of those flats with a special tool or a really, really large crescent wrench. I don't have anything like that, but what I do have is channel locks. And so if you grab a hold of this thing with channel locks on those flats, it will break loose. Grab a hold of that and push it away. And there we have it. Now we need to loosen this nut right here. It is a 21 millimeter. I've already broken this loose. It's not held on anywhere near as tight as this end is down here. Once this nut is loose, it's entirely possible that the inner tie rod is, uh, that the threads are kind of rusted into the outer tie rod. So you're going to need a 13 millimeter wrench in order to grab onto here and twist it loose. Now I would highly, highly suggest that even if you're going to take this thing to an alignment right after you replace it, uh, still count the threads when you take it out. And there we have it. Taking this nut off the end of here will then allow you to slide the boot all the way off the old tie rod. Some tie rods do come with a new nut for the new tie rod. Some of them do not, so make sure to save this and don't mangle it up too bad in case you need to reuse it on the new tie rod. If you're going to reuse this clamp right here, you're going to need a screwdriver and a pair of wire cutters in order to kind of spread this area right here back open again. That will allow you to bring this back in and lock it down like that and then squeeze this back here to tighten it with wire cutters. If you're not gonna reuse this, uh, you can order a new one from uh, either from the dealership, you can probably find them several places online, um, or you can use a zip tie, which is a very, very common thing to do. I went with a Melee replacement tie rod here. 
Um, you can also go with uh, Lemforder, Moog, um, you know, really any reputable brand you can go with. Uh, I went with this because it's the cheapest. Now you can replace the boots on these. Uh, it is not necessary. Uh, unless it has a rip or something like that, then absolutely replace it. But nine times out of 10, your boot will be in good condition. Even with 450,000 miles this has been exposed to, it is still in good condition. No rips to be found, so I'm going to reuse this one. In order to get this threaded on here, I ended up threading the inner tie rod into the rack and pinion already, uh, and, I, and I tightened it down up here with the, uh, with the channel locks. In order to get that back on, you have to take this boot off, so put the boot back on after this is in and tightened. Once these two halves are threaded back together again, you're gonna have a lot of turning of this 13 millimeter wrench in order to get that to seat back down. Oh my God, I forgot the nut. After the boot's on, do not forget to put this nut back on the end here. All right, and then to line up the threads for the inner tie rod and the outer tie rod, you're gonna need to use some force because both of them are tight, at least on my car they are. Make sure that's nice and straight. And then use your 13 millimeter to twist the inner tie rod in order to start threading. Make sure it's absolutely straight to prevent cross threading. Now once you got some threads in there, you got a long ways to go twisting with this 13 millimeter wrench before you're at the correct position. Once the inner tie rod is threaded in to the point where you're ready to start making your final adjustments, if you're using a laser alignment system like I am, go ahead and continue threading in the tie rod in order to line up your laser with the previous mark you made. Once we've got the tie rod adjusted to where it was originally, we can go ahead and tighten down this 22 millimeter nut right here. We're gonna bend that tab back this way. Once that tab's back in there, we can take our wire cutters and go back in here and cinch this down by pinching. That is now nice and tight and holds the boot in place as it should. That is going to be it guys for this video on changing the inner tie rods. If you're not already, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell in order to be notified of future videos. And I also mentioned in a previous video that I did start a Patreon as well. For those of you that wanna help support the channel a little more, a uh, link to the Patreon is down in the description. There's absolutely no need to support on Patreon. I'm not changing the way I'm structuring my content at all. Uh, it's only there for those that wanna help support the channel a little bit more. I will see you guys in the next video.